When I talk to uh, several uh, members of the media and, and uh, small business owners and trade associations uh, folks, early in January, right before the legislative session started, they asked me, well, what do you, what do you, you know, just, just how big of a trouble are we in this legislative session from the business community standpoint? And I, I said, we're in big trouble. Uh, you know, we're, at that point, the state faced a $6 billion shortfall. Taxes are going to go up. Uh, you, your business is going to be taxed a lot more come this time, starting probably in June or July. Um, and I was wrong. Uh, this is this, uh, and I'm glad I was wrong. I, I think the, the key thing from this legislative session was not what happened, but what didn't happen. And I think Jason's probably going to talk more about the tax and budget side of things. But, but from a business standpoint, particularly a small business standpoint, it was it was a pretty doggone good session when you, when you compare it to what it, what it could have been. And so I just wanted to touch base on a, on a couple of issues uh, tonight, and I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions later on or talk to you afterwards on, on, more, on more detail. But early on in the year, and particularly with the new uh, uh, federal administration, economic stimulus became the watchword of, of the winter. Uh, you know, how do we stimulate the economy? Obviously, everything is, is in the toilet right now. How do we get people back to work? How do we support the folks who, who have been laid off through no fault of their own? Uh, how do we turn things around? I mean, this isn't just you know, a Washington State problem, it's not just the United States problem. So, you know, there are, there are only a certain amount of things that, that uh, on a state level that the government can do. They can't print their own money, which I, you know, I think is a good thing. Um, so, what, what can you do? So, at the early on in the session, they introduced a bill that would, would increase unemployment uh, insurance benefits temporarily uh, by about $45 and, and also raise the, the minimum. So, uh, a, a permanent increase as well as a, as a temporary increase. And they wanted to do this because there was a four billion dollar budget surplus, or excuse me, not budget, four billion dollar surplus in the UI trust fund. Four billion dollars. The statutory limit really is only about two billion dollars what they need. There, so there's an extra two billion dollars. So what they wanted to do is draw down that two billion dollars in, in order to give people who have been laid off higher unemployment insurance checks. I thought to myself, well, you know, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard. If we have too much money, let's get it back in the private sector. I, but I really had a problem with this being called economic stimulus. And I won't go into the details of the economic theory behind it right now, but you can go read our, our study on, on this on WashingtonPolicy.org. But really it came down to, you know, what is economic stimulus? And I wanted legislators to, to really take that into account. What is economic stimulus? And, I, and, and giving people larger unemployment insurance checks is not economic stimulus, is what I argue. And it's very interesting because by the time this bill was passed and the governor signed, no one was really calling it economic stimulus anymore. I really think they, they understood the sense that this is a, a benefit. This is a government benefit that we're, we're giving out to people. Uh, but it's not stimulus. The thing, the thing I worry about, this, this approach, though, uh, in drawing down, drawing down the UI trust fund, is that this was calculated on a 7.5% unemployment rate. Well, we're at 9.1%, so we're way above what was a, you know officially or uh, primarily uh, calculated. So, you know, I, I do worry about that because once, if you start drawing down that UI trust fund too quickly, then you will end up in the future with, with higher, ta with, with uh, tax increases on businesses. And employers are the ones who pay UI tax, not employees. Um, so this kind of leads me to, well, what is economic stimulus? And, and really, you know, I saw, I saw some positive steps this year uh, on, on what I would call regulatory reform. I, you know, we, I like to say that you need to have a deregulatory stimulus package. Make it easier for small businesses, in particular, to start. Make it easier for them to, to function. A small business should, should focus on, on serving their customers, on producing that widget, uh, and less, you know, less time paying taxes and complying with regulations that may be onerous or unnecessary. So there was a positive step forward this year with the sign of Bill 5042 which would exempt small businesses from, from first-time paperwork violations. It's a small step forward, but, it, but it's a step forward. The other thing I think to keep in mind is that we saw, well, I think probably more so this year than any year before, a lot of the ideas that we push for in regulatory form turned into pieces of actual legislation. Now, maybe they didn't get a hearing and didn't, didn't go anywhere, but people, are talk, people in Olympia are talking about it, and it's not just one side of that. Both sides down there are talking about regulatory reform. In fact, Dan and I are working with the uh, State Attorney General, Rob McKenna, on putting together a pilot project on how to, to really take this on, and using, particularly using the, uh, the federal economic stimulus money. How can we set up a system to, to really redo the regulatory reform process? 
Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, paid family leave, some of you may have, uh, be familiar with the paid family leave insurance bill that passed a couple of years ago. Essentially would have mandated that everybody pay into a system where if you had a child or adopted a, a, a newborn, you would be eligible up to five weeks paid uh, paid family leave at $250 a week. They didn't know how they are going to pay for it, and now that the, the economy hit, hit the skids, they really did not have any way to pay for it. So we, we said, well, we should cancel this. This is, a, this is a, an altruistic idea, but it's, it is one that the private sector should take on. If a business says it to itself, well, we want to provide this benefit to its, their employees, that's great. God bless you, do it. Uh, it shouldn't be something that the state takes on as a one-size-fits-all mandate. So this bill delays the implementation of this program until 2012. Not the perfect solution, the solution we'd like to see, but it is, again, it's a step in the right direction. It shows that legislators, for as much sometimes we can be frustrated with them, you know, have to accept the reality of there's just no money. Uh, a couple of things that, that didn't happen that were, that were really big, or actually I'll just mention one, uh, is the Worker Privacy Act, otherwise known as the Employer Gag Rule. And what this would have done was make sure that as you as an employer could not hold mandatory employee meetings uh, that talked about things of political or religious in nature. And this was a response to a company who, have, who actually broke company policy and state policy out of state, um, you know, holding a meeting saying, you sh I think you should not vote for uh, Barack Obama. It had nothing to do with business. Well, that, the person who, the, 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 empl the employer manager who did that was fired. Uh, and, and so, I mean, these, there are mechanisms in place already to, pr to protect this type of stuff from happening. What this was, though, it was, a, was an attempt to make, make it so uh, businesses could not present the other side of an argument if, a, if employees were considering unionizing. So this, this was a very contentious bill. It died a very horrible death, very controversial death. Um, and I, it was, I, I was surprised. I thought this one would probably go through as well. But be aware that it will probably show up next year. Uh, looking forward um, to what we're doing the rest of the year, Jason and I are working on a pretty big subsidy uh, business and occupation tax reform uh, policy brief. Uh, we've worked on policy briefs regarding the BNO tax for a while, but we wanted to do some economic remodeling and really get at the heart of the issue. How do we reform the BNO tax uh, you know, so that uh, budding entrepreneurs aren't punished for being unprofitable and still have to pay this BNO tax? Last thing I'll mention is that we are in the final process of, of nailing down a date for our statewide small business conference, which will be held in uh, uh, probably late October, early November. If you sign up on our website, we'll let you know when we schedule that. It's a very, it's a great conference. We bring out about three, 250 to 300 small business owners. And the point is for them to propose policy recommendations to us on health care, taxes, regulations, reform. And so we take that information, uh, we chew on it, we, we, we do the analysis, put into a report that we, re that we give to the legislature. And, and it, which is great because it's, it, legislators re recognize that it's not just Washington Policy Center's ideas, it's also the small business owners' ideas. And it really gets, uh, gives us a foot in the door, so to speak, to, to work with legislators uh, on how to make Washington State a better place for small businesses. So I, I'll turn it back over to Dan, but I'd be happy to answer your questions at the end of the program. Thank you. I mentioned earlier about ways we measure our impact, and one of those was the media coverage. And the other is what you'll hear tonight from our researchers, and that's uh, their direct work with policymakers and the legislative process. So every time we testify before a, a legislative committee, we have to be invited to testify because of our tax status. We're a 501c3. Uh, but you'll, you heard from Carl how we're working with the Attorney General on regulatory reform. Um, we regularly testify before committees. Um, members of both parties invite us to testify. We've been on two of Governor Gregoire's um, task forces. And our next speaker, Jason Mercier, uh, who runs our Olympia office, which is just two blocks from the Capitol, regularly works with uh, the governor's office and other legislators. Um, so it, it's a great resource for us to have somebody so close to the Capitol where we can um, influence and work with policymakers to craft good, good policy and make sure bad policy doesn't get enacted.